Hello, my name is Brandon. I want to give you a little bit of background on me. Um, after a lot of health issues, after a failed marriage, and uh, a career that didn't seem to be going anywhere, <clears throat> I was dealing with a lot of stresses, and I kept feeling like God was calling me away from the job and uh, telling me to trust in Him. So, September of 2021, I uh, took an early retirement and just started seeking God. I know we're in the end times. I know that God has a purpose for me. And uh, I wanted to know what his purpose was. So through fasting and praying and, and trying to seek him and change my ways, uh, change my perspective, there's been a lot of changes and a lot of seasons for me, a lot of different things I've done and gone through that the God has been showing me different I guess lessons through through life and and places where I you know have worked volunteered assisted whatever. Nonetheless, I'm trying to understand God's voice and how He speaks to me, and I'm I'm basically making this video uh, because I feel compelled to create content for God, uh, Christian content to share my journey to share whatever it is I'm experiencing uh, with the world. Uh, I'm a firm believer that I am a Christian who has been saved, who has been born again, spirit-filled, and I believe that uh, when Jesus comes back, he's going to take me with him, and I'm not going to be here after that. And there's going to be people left behind wondering who I was or wondering who the others were that were taken. Um I'm sure there's already a narrative about aliens and whatnot, but uh, Jesus has been talking about his return for a very long time. And uh, don't be deceived by that deception. Um, anyway, I've been, I've been learning how God speaks to me. And so he speaks to me through scripture, right? He speaks, me, speaks to me through the word, the gospels. Uh, you don't need any other book. I, you know, I, I've looked into other religions. I've looked into other things. It's not like I've been hard-headed my whole life, and Christianity is the only way. Uh, there were times in my life where I wondered, is there another way? And I would look, and I would investigate. But everything just kept leading me back to Jesus, leading me back to Jesus. I'm just telling you from experience, from wisdom, from what I've seen, I've all been a, a type of person that tried to learn from other people's mistakes, okay? And uh, all I can tell you from my experiences with God, with the Holy Spirit, is I've tried to stay close to Him, uh, even when I wasn't that, you know, when I felt far away from Him. You know, I, I call those years of my life uh, like I was a pagan Christian. I identified as a Christian. Uh, I wasn't really practicing. I was lukewarm. I was comfortable with going to church uh, <clears throat> maybe once a week or so. And, and when I say going to church, it, it doesn't mean a building. Um, we are ourselves, our bodies, our temple for the Holy Spirit. The scriptures are clear on that. When, when we invite Jesus into our lives, we make him the King of kings, the Lord of lords. The Holy Spirit will be our advocate and will dwell within us. Um, many people are saved, but it's another thing to be spirit-filled. And I think there's a difference there. And I think there's a difference between people being religious and legalistic versus having an actual relationship with Jesus. Um, I don't really know how to navigate people to having a relationship with Jesus other than just telling you what my experience is like. Um, I am super aware of God's presence uh, in my life. And it hasn't always been that way. Um, there were many times where I didn't think much about what God was doing in the world or whatever, and I wasn't really praying and spending time in the Word and the Scripture and seeking Him. I, when I had downtime, I was watching movies or, or you know playing video games, whatever, whatever I wanted to do, really. Um, so now is a time in a season where Jesus is calling out His people and He's activating people into His military services. And, and a lot of people are not heeding that call. They feel the yearning. They feel the tug. They hear that small, still voice, but they are not obeying. 
and I'm trying to obey, and I'm trying to follow that small, still voice. And the scriptures talk about how God will speak to us in our dreams. And now, I don't believe that every dream I have is a message from God for me. I don't even remember a lot of my dreams. So when I do have a dream, uh, and it is uh, impactful, then I feel like it's noteworthy or something in my spirit tells me I need to write that down, then I'm trying to put notes into my phone in the middle of the night uh, regarding that dream. <clears throat> but if I don't, I will forget that dream quick. I don't have the memory I used to have. Um, I'm struggling with that. But um, I'm having to make notes more now than ever before, and I should have been doing that my whole life because I... I feel like God speaks to me in dreams, and I know that he's spoke to me through a couple of visions as well. Um, but through the body of Christ, through other Christians, you know, he will speak to us. But yes, again, not every message from another Christian is from God. You know, some people can speak against the Holy Spirit's destiny for you. Uh, some people <clears throat> can use forms of manipulation and different tactics to to manipulate you and control you. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, ragweed is high right now in North Texas. Um, so my hope is for you that uh, you will pray and you will learn discernment. You will diligently seek the Lord and not people. Um, we are not meant to be people pleasers. And uh, we don't put a person between us and our relationship with God. Um, so... I'm trying to get to my point here. There might be a lot of points, and if something speaks to you, that's great. Uh, leave me a comment or something if, if anything in this message speaks to you. Uh, I'm trying to not speak with a script. I'm trying to just trust that the Holy Spirit is speaking through me, and I'm speaking as plainly as I can. So if I make mistakes, just have some grace for me. So I've been seeing 911 for years and haven't quite known, does it mean something? Why am I always looking at the clock exactly at 9, 11, 11 minutes after 9, whether it's a.m. or p.m., didn't matter. I would just randomly look at the clock and go, huh, 911, interesting. Most people don't look into that and see and think anything of it, just like with their dreams. But there's plenty of people in the Bible that had dreams and visions and and they were led to great things by, by God because they had faith in what God was telling them. Um, did it align with Scripture? Was it, you know, a righteous request from God, you know, in your dream? Uh, is God showing you something? Are you, are you receiving word like a small, still voice in your spirit uh, before something comes up? That when you hear it from Scripture or you hear it from somebody in the body of Christ, uh, like, you know, a word of knowledge or, you know, prophetic message, whatever it may be, where it resonated with you, where it was like, aha, all of a sudden these connections were being made, where all of a sudden in your brain, you're like epiphany, and you get this rush of exhilaration or sometimes an emotion of laughter or, or even just happily crying, <clears throat> tears of joy, and all of a sudden you realize, wow, God has been speaking to me this way or that way or another about this very subject. And it's not always easy to grasp because when you live day to day and you're not uh, anxious about the future and you're not depressed about the past, where you are living by faith and, and, and not by sight and you're trusting God for all your needs, and you're trying to get in tune with him and you're trying to learn his scriptures and you're trying to live the gospel and everything that comes up at you in life and and uh, you just trust that uh, the Holy Spirit is speaking to you. And even if it means to walk away from something or someone, um, you have to trust that God is leading you in that and learn from it if you did it wrong, you know, whatever it is. Try to find out what God is teaching you in that moment, good or bad. What is a learnable lesson in that, and how can you do better moving forward and repent where you need to repent? Let go of what you need to let go of 
<clears throat> move on, move forward, but do what God is asking you to do, what he's putting on your heart. That not just have I been seeing 9-11, I finally found a prophetic message that really resonated with me uh, from a lady named Millie um, Militian or something of that nature. Uh, I think her channel is called The Kingdom of God Matters on YouTube. And I found another uh, message from her as well, another uh, YouTube video that really I feel like the Holy Spirit was speaking through her to me. Um, and it just resonated with me and what's going on, what God has been showing me, whether it was dreams or life experiences or things that have been dropped into my spirit or even scripture. So all these confirmations are happening. All these supernatural spiritual confirmations are happening. The only way that God could orchestrate it, it, it can, man cannot make it happen like that. And um, I know she had some teachings on the number 11, which also just blew me away because that's what I was going to get ready to talk about is the number 11 comes up a lot lately. So it's not just 911, 911, right? It's also any time of the day when it's 11 minutes after for some reason i'll check i'll look over at the time and i'm not like watching the clock all the time i'm not one of those types of people and it even happens when my son's around me even he does it <clears throat> we just automatically look and bam 11. um i mean stop in the microwave bam 11 seconds you're like i wasn't even planning that i wasn't even thinking about it it wasn't intentional um, for instance, yesterday, um, there's been the fires in Hawaii over Maui, and I was watching a news video about it. At that time, the death toll was 111. I know it's increased since then, and, and no telling what it'll be afterwards, but uh, as soon, a few minutes after watching that video about the fires, I went out to my car because I had to get going to go get my son. The temperature was 111 degrees Fahrenheit. And I thought, wow, that's interesting. Why is this 11 coming up so prevalent in, in so many different ways? It's not just with time, you know, it's sometimes Bible verses even. Um, and so I was thinking about it, and I was dwelling on it, and I've been asking the Holy Spirit about it, and I feel like he finally revealed it to me. Um, so going back to September of 2021, when I left my job and I started seeking the Lord, um, February 19th of 2022, I had a dream that was very powerful and had a lot of symbolism. And I don't want to go into the depths and details of the entire dream. It would take a while to talk about it all. But there was a part in that dream, and this dream keeps being brought to my remembrance, like the Holy Spirit wants me to remember it, <clears throat> even though I've written it down. Um, it seems like it's, it's relevant at different points through this journey. So in that dream, I was in a vault, and this vault was just a large white room, room wasn't as important as the things that were in the room and like there were big sculptures and things that seemed to have significance seemed the things that had meaning <clears throat> but the thing I was led to that really caught my attention was a, a large grandfather clock and you know my my ceiling here is nine foot and it was at least nine foot tall uh, this clock and it looked like the Chrysler building in New York City. It was very ornate and art deco. And the top of the building is where the clock was, right? The top of the clock had a face on all four sides of the building. And I'm looking at the face of the clock as the time is going around. And then at some point, like a Rubik's Cube, the clock part turned, bam. So it was like a big square just spun, and it was a new face of a clock. So I feel like that could have meant that was a whole new year, like a whole new year. Um, and on the face of that clock, there was a painting of like a big billowy cloud, 
and it had the face uh, with big puffy cheeks and you probably remember artwork um, where you've seen it like a wind blowing you know right and so that artwork was getting ready to blow and it was in the 11th hour but it wouldn't strike 12 o'clock yet it's like it was the 11th hour it didn't strike 12 like it wasn't quite ready and I felt like this was all a prophetic clock of some kind I felt like it was um, important that's how I sensed it you know <clears throat> and everything seemed like it had some symbolism and it did blow out uh, some vapor right out of its mouth and, and I remember it just being important. I remember having this sense of the end is near. And my, I don't know how to explain it. I have this, this yearning, this sense of I, I care about the souls of the people out there, but I don't know what to do for them. I don't know how to go and change people's hearts and minds. You know, you make a video like this, and when you start talking about Jesus, you get comments and haters and you get downvoters. I mean, this world is so wicked, and I just hope that, you know, maybe I'm edifying the body of Christ out there. If you are a believer, no matter where you're at in your season, and God is asking you to do something, just trust in him, even if it's scary. You know, I left a good job, right? Um, but I just, I just knew in my spirit, God had something else for me. He had a greater purpose for me, something that had meaning. And um, I wasn't seeking my own way in the world, but a way that he wanted for me. And so this season has been about me not seeking money, me not seeking a spouse, uh, me not seeking anything else except God and trying to live as righteously as possible. And, you know, because of health and stuff, you know, I, I've, it's been a bit of a wilderness season, an isolation season. Um and there's been many struggles and many things that have come up. But nonetheless, that's not important. I don't want to focus on what the enemy is doing. I want to focus on what God is doing and how can I help him. And my guess is the 11 has something to do. We are in the 11th hour. God wants us to get over our fears. The body of Christ, which is us, those of us who have professed Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, he is asking us to do our part and glorify him, to preach the gospel to the world. How do we do that? We just do that wherever we are. We are a church. We are a holy temple. We are who God created us to be, right? Jesus is the only reason the Holy Spirit will be our advocate and live in us. And we need to trust him when he's speaking to us to allow us to be led here or there. And if we sense that he wants us to fast, then we fast. If we need to pray, we pray. If somebody comes up on our heart, then we need to pray for that person. There's a lot going on behind the scenes that we can't see, but we should not fear the enemy. We should not focus on what the devil is doing. We don't see into the spirit realm. God did not give us uh, that ability to uh, see what the devil looks like. You know. So if you're imagining these dragons, right, if you're imagining dragons, then you might need to rethink how you're perceiving the spirit world. God knows your limitations. You're just a human being. You need to focus on what he has planned for you and what you need to do in this realm and trust that in your weakness, he will be strong. And when you obey him, obedience is much more important than sacrifice. Now, I'm still trying to understand the difference between sacrifice and obedience. I'm still working on that. And I'm also still working on when is the Holy Spirit leading me here or there? I make mistakes, right? Sometimes I think this is what the Holy Spirit's telling me, and then it's not fruitful. Nothing comes of it. There was a time when I was applying to jobs, and uh, things weren't working out. And there was a couple of jobs where I definitely knew it wasn't from God. So I was being tested, and trying to trust in God for provisions. <clears throat> I don't have the finances I ought to have, but yet God takes care of me each and every month. And he likes to use people. He likes to multiply his blessings. 
He wants us to be blessed. He wants the body of Christ to, to be givers like he is a giver, right? But he also wants us to receive blessings too. And he will multiply those blessings through the body of Christ. So you might be praying for something, and it might seem like there's no way out unless he makes a way. And sure enough, somebody who is a Christian, and sometimes he's used people that aren't Christians too. Like he, he'll use the enemy towards whatever purpose he says. But I'm just saying um, God talks to us in different ways. And people expect an audible voice, and, and people put expectations on God and, and what they should hear and shouldn't hear. I, I was going to a church where they they think that the canon is closed regarding what the Holy Spirit can and cannot do anymore. They, they said that the Holy Spirit, they don't believe in speaking in tongues and all that, uh, any of the gifts of the Spirit. And I'm sorry, I, I'm just not that naive. I'm just not going to say, you know what? God can and can't do this because this one scripture in the Bible locks it all in. And yet, I'm just going to say God doesn't do anything anymore. I mean, come on. I don't want to argue about doctrine, you know, theology. I don't want I don't want to sit here and critique the Bible. I'm sure your knowledge is way better than mine, but I'm telling you about my relationship with Jesus. And it's not just every Sunday. It's every day. I try to spend time in the Word with Him, uh, whether I'm getting the Word through somebody I know uh, in the body of Christ, or whether I'm getting the Word uh, through a church or a ministry online, um, or an individual online. Uh, everywhere I go, I am trying to glorify God to the best of my ability, even if it just means wearing a, a Jesus hat, you know? Something where it says, you know what, this is who I care about, is Jesus. I don't care about your issues. I don't care about what you've got going on in your world. If you're not about Jesus right now, you're seeking the wrong thing. You need to be seeking Jesus because he's coming back. And if you're not taking it serious, I'm sorry. I don't know if you're going to make it, okay? Um he doesn't like lukewarm Christians who are comfortable just going to church on Sunday, getting all dressed up, and pretending that they have a great relationship with God when, in all honesty, they have no relationship with God. And I'm not boasting here. I'm just saying, don't be lukewarm. He wants to vomit you out of his mouth. And he is calling on everybody to do what they have said they're going to do. If you have said Jesus is your king, then you need to be professing him as your Lord and Savior everywhere you go. You should not be a secret Christian at work. You should not be a secret Christian uh, out in public. I mean, wh whoever knows you ought to know you're a Christian. How about that? Not, you know, you find the calling that God has led you to. We are all a different part of the body of Christ. Not everybody is supposed to be a pastor of a church. Not everybody is supposed to be a singer. Just Find peace with what God has called you to do. Get over that fear. Ask for boldness. Ask for discernment. And just do it. And see how he blesses you. So I'm trying right now. I don't really want to make this video. I don't even know what I'm talking about. I'm just talking. <laughs> I'm hoping the Holy Spirit is talking through me. And I'm trying to base it on wisdom and experiences of my own, and I'm trying to figure out what it is to live by faith and to follow the Holy Spirit and to trust in Him, even if it means walking away from others, even if it means saying no to others, even if it means getting away from every distraction out there. Um, I've definitely been isolated for a while now. Like I said, it's been since September of 2021 that I've been seeking the Lord and I've not been I've not been trying to live a worldly life I've not been trying to conform to the ways of this world I've been trying to conform to the ways of the scripture and uh, maybe I do know what I'm talking about I 
I feel like God's taking care of me supernaturally, and he's manifesting it in the physical realm, and he's trusting me with a little, and eventually he's going to trust me with a lot. It's not easy. No one ever said it would be. Uh, there's definitely battles that go on in the spirit realm where you're going to have to find people to pray with you, even if it just means texting a bunch of people. Hey, pray with me. Um, call your Christians, you know, ask them to pray with you, pray with you, pray with you. But don't be in fear because if you are in a realm of fear, you're in the wrong thinking. There's something that you need to work out with God. And don't just always ask Christians to help you pray for you. You need to do your part and obey. Again, obedience is better than sacrifice. So obey the scriptures. If you are blatantly living in sin, willful sin, guess what? You're going to have problems. You're giving the enemy a foothold in your life. And you can't serve two masters, right? The Bible's clear on that. You can only serve God. And I know it's scary because you have your way of thinking in the physical realm. But when you trust the Holy Spirit and when you trust that small, still voice, it, it takes time. It's a continual, daily, moment-by-moment, event-by-event relationship. And I ain't telling you it's easy, but I'm telling you it's got to be worth it if you're seeking his kingdom in everything you do. It's got to be worth it because no matter how uncomfortable we are here on earth, I hear I'm going to like heaven a whole lot better than I like it here. Um, so, wherever you are at in your belief, I just want to pray for you right now. So, Father God, I lift up these viewers to you. Holy Spirit, if there was anything in this message for them, I ask that you please stir their hearts, stir their minds. Bring this message to their uh, remembrance at a later time. Help them to know your will in their lives. Help them to know what you have planned for them, even if it's not glorious, even if it is glorious, whichever. God, as long as they are doing your will and following your patterns, I pray blessings on them. Father God, I plead the blood of the Lamb upon them. I proclaim Psalms 91 protection and Psalms 20 blessings over them their family, their loved ones, and the Holy Spirit's ministry through them in the name of Jesus. Amen. Take care. Bye.